What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is I, Randy, with RTS Mobile Gaming, bringing you another fantastic Sea of Conquest video today. In today's video, we have three or four days left in between seasons before we launch into Season 5. Therefore, this is a perfect opportunity to test new build improvements because you are not going to be thrown off by enemies who have buffs from cities, okay, buffs from uh, the Grand Line, they're not going to have their seasonal gem bonuses, so this is a great way to test the vanilla version of these different builds, nice and plain, and really get down to the basics and see what is successful and what's not. From there, you can further enhance that immensely by getting those different bonuses, like I said, from Grand Line, seasonal buffs, uh, from the uh, different ports and things like that, and from uh, the gems, okay? So, I've got a few, few reports for you against my good buddy, Glare, who has been my plus one for my live stream podcast sessions for 68 of the 69 sessions, so I love you forever, Glare. Uh, you are the best uh, stream co-patriot. And here we are facing her in the Stray Clash setup. Now, I am actually going for, in this particular build, a stronger one versus one composition. And uh, it's still not leaning into the full meta with the full cutthroat build. But this is going very, very powerfully into uh, some of the very high healing as well as some of the very, very effective bait ship strategies that we like to use okay so the overall performance here as you can see we were able to come away with a win very similar results for the past three or four wins all combined which is really exciting and the most exciting thing for me is we are not running with a critical strike damage build on stormbringer and we're not running with a critical strike damage build on our rage uh tidal rage okay so Stormbringer was top damage without a crit build. Tidal Rage was also doing pretty good in damage without a crit build. And Tidal Rage is not only running not a crit build, but they are running a tanky taunt build where they are pulling aggro in and dealing a lot of damage when they receive damage. And as you can see here, Tidal Rage did receive the most damage in this fight, so it was effective in its bait ship utilization. We also had strong damage from our tanky setup on the artillery ship, and superb damage from our uh, one significantly offensive ship here, our uh, strategic ship. We still don't have head on wall up, so that's hurting us a little bit here. We've been trying to craft that all week. And uh, lastly, we have the Bones Onimusha Cordelia composition on the Warhammer, allowing for incredible healing and still pretty solid damage output. Okay, flagship has Wanda on here, allowing for more damage to be redirected via Obi's ultimate. Lots of power there. Okay, um, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual build really quick, and then we'll talk about uh, Gem Z, the sponsor for today's content. Okay, so as you can see here, Ahab, Obi, Wanda, with we are running on the flagship here, Yamada set. I'm actually using a speed sail just for auto trading right now, but I usually use the Yamada sail for uh, crit resistance. Okay. The Warhammer is running an offensive set, obviously. It is running a high crit build. It has pretty nice offensive statistics, considering I'm between seasons without gem bonuses. So it still hits very hard, does some great damage. With just two damage dealers, it actually outdamages the artillery ship, as you saw in the previous uh, report. The Orochi, again, I'm trying to get head on wall up here. That's really what I love to have. Okay, um, and that's and that's what I'm looking forward to getting as an ultimate on this ship because it's a little bit of an upgrade. But overall, Annihilation does fairy, uh, fairly well. It, it does allow me to do a lot of bonus damage for my first couple ultimates, which is great. Um, and then Fury of the Storm set, since this ship has reduced aggro, both from the ship skill, stealthy maneuvers, and from Griffin's uh, four-star ability, we are reducing the aggro significantly on this ship, so I'm running full, full offense, okay? To the artillery ship. This is running a sovereign setup. As you know, artillery pulls aggro very fast in the fight. My goal is I want this to live a little bit longer. I am tired of seeing my artillery ship die instantly when the fight starts. Okay, and maybe I just need to switch to a different ultimate. Reluctant to fall behind would pull less aggro. Maybe that's what I need to do. But new age ammunition, while it does great damage, causes my artillery ship to pull incredible amounts of aggro. Okay, let's talk real quick about the sponsor for today's video, Gem Z. 
Gleamstone, ladies and gentlemen, Gem Z has fantastic Gleamstone, uh, Gleamstone discounts. Go ahead and join their Discord from the link in my video description below. Check it out. You can get these $100 Gleamstone packs for $85, $86. Investigate for yourself, and thank you to Gem Z for sponsoring today's content. Also, thank you to Gem Z for the amazing award giveaways in our stream on Sunday. They did over $200 worth of giveaways. Fantastic. All right, and back to the build. I know these last two ships are the ones you really want to see. This is the non-crit damage based burning blazing Stormbringer. Now, I am using the Crow on this ship. However, as I did a lot of testing, Lester is only about 5 to 10% weaker than the Crow. So if you have a good Lester and he's higher star rated than your Crow, you might be better off using Lester. However, if you do have Crow to six stars, he has some nice abilities which allow him to really spread his burning very, very quickly on enemy ships, allowing you to trigger uh, both Tanaka's trinkets and Ember's additional damage very quickly in the fight. It will also allow you to get a better chance to generate Varga's Fury early in the fight if a lot of different ships have burning stacks on them already, okay? For this ship, we are using two-piece... Again, there is no crit on this ship. We are using two-piece Sacred Guardian to get 10% HP. But we don't want, okay, what we do not want is the aggro from that. And then we are using two-piece Yamada to get high attack. Now, you could in theory run four-piece Yamada and have these same bonuses. However, for this particular video, I only had one level 28 Yamada gun. All my other guns are level 25, so going from a 25 to a 35 is a massive amount of boost in your base attack, and it's very, very effective. Also, this ship is not designed to be a high aggro pull, like I said, so you should be pulling more aggro with your bait ship, which I'll bring up in a minute, uh, and allow this one to live. However, in the meantime, we're getting 20% bonus HP from these two set bonuses, and we are getting an incredible amount of attack on both the figurehead and on the helm, and we're able to maintain great crit resistance up here. Overall, stats for this ship look really, really nice. Like I said, there are no crit stats, but we have good crit resistance, and we have high attack with three damage-based or attack-based trinkets on the ship. We are running with the Chain Bombs, giving us 30% bonus Blazing Drowning. We are running with... Drifting Wanderer for another 36% blazing, okay? And then we have a Spyglass giving us 30% attack plus another 12% that stacks, okay? Uh, so overall, this is the very, very powerful ship. It does a lot of great damage, and it doesn't rely on crit. I just can't stress that enough. It does not rely on crit. There is no crit on this ship, okay? That allows me to lean in a little bit harder for the damage bonuses and things like that, which is really fantastic, Okay. On to the Tidal Rage. This ship is also running with no crit stats. As you can see here, I have no crit trinkets. I have the same setup, 30% attack, 36% drowning, and there's a chain bombs on hammer for another 30. So both of these ships have the same exact amount of blazing or drowning bonuses as each other, as well as a very similar attack. And here we've opted to go with the four uh, Sacred Guardian setup to make this a really, really powerful bait ship that generates a lot of aggro, does a lot of damage, and really generates an incredible amount of damage from these different procs from the Chain Bombs and from Adeline's Bloodfang, okay? Naturally, I uh, was able to craft a purple Tidal Rage that has Power of the Tide, so I'm using that for now. I have another purple, uh, purple Tidal Rage that has one of the other ultimates on it, the Abyssal uh, Gaze, I believe. And that one is also decent, but this one is going to give me a little bit more of an edge in the one versus one scene, which is what I said I was making this build for. This build is now being optimized for one versus one, whereas most of my builds are usually optimized for group fights and longer duration fights. This build is still going to do really, really well in those uh, longer duration fights, having Cordelia with Bones on the Warhammer, allowing for incredible healing and rage regeneration there. Plus, Wanda on the flagship, again, is going to allow Obi to gain an incredible amount of value over time as the rage stacks build. It's really, really interesting. So, that is the setup, folks. There are, again, no crit stats on two of my top damage ships, and as you saw in those reports, these uh, ships still perform beautifully. So, if 
you've enjoyed this video, we are here in Purgatory between season four and five. Feel free to like and subscribe. And thank you to Gem Z for sponsoring today's content.